Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning everyone. Welcome to Razak School of Government 9 webinar. Today's webinar is called The Future is Flatter. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few housekeeping items and the structure of our webinar session today. To those who follow this webinar through Zoom, please mute your microphones. We are also broadcasting this webinar live on our Facebook. This webinar session is divided into three segments. First, we will begin with key questions posed to our guest speaker. Then, we will answer questions from participants. At any time during the webinar, you may submit your questions to the guest speaker. Just type your questions in the chat and comment section. Please keep your question short and straightforward. As time allows, we will address as many questions as possible. Lastly, we will then wrap up today's webinar session. This webinar is recorded and you will be able to assess this recording via our Facebook and YouTube page. Without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest speaker, Professor Dr. Eko Prasojo, studied and earned a bachelor's degree in public administration at Fakultas Ilmu Sosial dan Ilmu Politik, Universitas Indonesia in 1995. He then continued and earned a Master of Public Administration from the German University of Administrative Sciences, Speyer, the Speyer Postgraduate Program for Public Administration in the year 2000, and earned a doctorate at the same place in 2003. Professor Dr. Eko Prasojo is the youngest professor at the faculties. He earned the title professor when he was 33 years old. In 2019, he received the prestigious Habibi Award for his contribution to social and political knowledge. In the same year, he became the third Asian to receive the Braben Lecture Award. He is a public policy specialist at the Department of Administrative Sciences, FISIP Universitas Indonesia. In addition, he is also an expert in collaborative governance, administrative reforms, and human resources in the public sector. Professor Dr. Eko, let us get started. The first question to the guest speaker is, why is bureaucracy important to government? Professor Eko. Oh, good morning, Pak Juhari. Thank you very much for uh, introducing me to the participants. It is my honor to be here to share uh, experience and knowledge uh, to the uh, participants uh, coming from Indonesia and also from Malaysia. Yeah. The first question was, why is the bureaucracy very important uh, for the governments? Because the bureaucracy is the engine of developments. So the bureaucracy uh, has responsibility to deliver uh, policy made by the governments and also to deliver public services, uh, the excellent public services to the citizens. So bad or good, uh, a government actually will be characterized by the accountability, the efficiency, and also the effectiveness of uh, bureaucracy in uh, a government. So that's why bureaucracy is very important to uh, to make sure that all mandated in the constitutions effectively implemented and delivered to the citizens. 
So, but it is not easy to create a professional bureaucracy because uh, bureaucracy is working with the political interests, uh, political interference. So, for example, in Indonesia, in uh, also in some other developing countries, uh, bureaucracy uh, is always um, co-opted and also interference by the political parties and political interests. So becoming professional is not easy for the bureaucracy, but we should always um, make the bureaucracy independent, neutral, uh, by introducing, for example, um, merit system and also uh, professionalism in the bureaucracy. This is maybe the short answer why the bureaucracy is very important, Pak Johari, and dear participants. Thank you, Professor Echo. Uh, what we could gather from the first response is that bureaucracy is necessary to execute the policy. Yes. And of course, there are challenges, among others, the political interference in executing the policy. Uh, Professor Echo, uh, allow us to move to the second question. How would Flatter be better for government? Thank you very much, Pa Juhari. I think the strategic uh, environmental ecosystem has has, has been uh, changing. Yeah, uh, the organizational paradigm is also changed. So we need uh, speed and responsiveness in uh, executing, implementing the policy. Uh, to the citizens, the bureaucracy should be uh, flexible, yeah, uh, but also oriented to the result and producti productivity. Uh, that's why uh, the questions: um, How should be flatter the, the bureaucracy better for the governments? I think the flatter is the better. Yeah because uh, it means that the decision-making made by the government should be uh, shorter and also fast, yeah, uh, to make sure that uh, all the public services could um, effectively implemented and also um, uh, fulfill the expectation of, of the citizens, yeah. Uh, and also with the development of uh, advanced technology like uh, ICT, uh, nanotechnology, uh, robotic uh, technology, biotechnology, and other advanced technology, the virtual integrations of organization would be uh, easily yeah, to integrate all uh, business process, uh, vertical integrations, and also to improve yeah, the uh, capability of human resources. So handling with the problems faced by the citizen as well as faced by the uh, governments. So I think this is uh, the answer why we need, uh, we need a flatter bureaucracy in the governments because uh, the changing of uh, ecosystem of the governments and bureaucracy so we need uh, agility in the new era, uh, Pak Juhari and dear participants. The nature and the scale of the global trends and SIP are forcing the public sector organization to be agile. That means moving toward to a flatter structure, striving more quality and opportunity, yeah? uh, sharing strong vision and purposes among agencies, yeah? Uh, between uh, national governments, provincial, and also uh, local governments. So, uh, in short, that we can say that agility is needed to help the public sector effect a major transformation, uh, to size opportunities and to achieve its objective. While agility is not an end and uh, in itself, it is a prerequisite for being. Uh, uh, truly uh, strategic. 
So it uh, it means that we need uh, agile team. Yeah, agile team means that uh, teams in organization are structured differently compared to traditional hierarchical organization. They are cross-functional, share a strong pur uh, purposes, commit to each other to deliver and also can deliver end-to-end -end course value. Cross-functional teams member retain their autonomy in their respective area of focus and set their own work uh, pace and supervise their own activities. However, they're uh, expected to collaborate and leverage from each other's skill set yeah, to achieve the desirable outcomes uh, in the development, in the government, and as well in public uh, service delivery. Uh, this is my uh, answer, Pak Johan. Thank you, Professor Eko. Uh, what we gather is that the changes in the external environment require the bureaucracy to be more agile, to be responsive to the needs of the people in particularly. And there could be some reorganization required, such as cross-functional team, some level of autonomy for people, for the bureaucracy itself to respond, to be more agile, to respond to the external environment. Professor Eko, the last question uh, from RSOG is that, how can we flatten the bureaucratic structures? Yeah, this is a very important question, yeah? So I think there are um, four prerequisite transformation in public sector organization in the bureaucracy, in the governments to uh, uh, flatten, yeah? One is uh, structural transformation. So means that we have to uh, restructure, reorganize the organi organizational structure in the, in the governments from what we call uh, functional base or function base into the performance base. Uh, organization that focus on uh, achieving the performance indicator of uh, organizations. So, uh, so we restructure, for example, the uh, in Indonesia, we call S1, yeah, S1-3, S1-4 into the functional structure that more compatible with the performance indicator, with the capability and competence of civil servants in order to achieve uh, more uh, efficient and also uh, effective of uh, performance in the governments. This is what we call structural transformations. So in short, we can say that performance-based organization is needed yeah, to be more responsive to the expectation of, of citizens, to be more capable so in doing their job. Yeah. So what we call the network governance or uh, flat organizations. So we move from what we call a hierarchical model into the squad model. Uh, squad model consists of uh, various competence of civil servants doing and sharing uh, outcome of uh, performance uh, with their own competence, but uh, integrated in, uh, in the task and also assignment. This is what we call structural transformations into the network governance or uh, performance-based organizational structure. More agile, uh, but also capable organization. The second one is what we call digital transformations. So with technology that I mentioned before, um, the business process in organization, so will be shorter, uh, we will be efficient, uh, more efficient, also more effective, yeah, uh, and also can be also integrated yeah, into one uh, single platform, uh, digital platform of the governments, so that uh, the people can access um, easier the public service from the smartphone or from the Android, yeah, like uh, uh, online shopping, yeah, that we already. 
uh, did yeah for uh, uh, three or four years yeah that we can uh, uh, go shopping online yeah. so this is what we call digital transformation the third of of, of course uh, cultural transformations so change the mindset uh, culture shared uh, values yeah mental model of the public servant but also the people handling with new uh, governments yeah because uh, structural transformation and digital transformation we thought cultural transformation maybe uh, could also uh, cause the uh, corruptive behavior yeah in the in the bureaucracy itself and the fourth transformation is i think the regulatory reform so we had we have to re regulation regulate uh, regulate re regulation or deregulation yeah from the uh normally in uh, the over bureaucratization in the bureaucrat drug bureaucracy and over hierarchy in the bureaucracy has been caused by the uh over regulations so that's why re regulation and deregulation is very important in order to make uh, bureaucracy more uh, uh, efficient and so uh, flatter this is i think uh, prerequisite into the flatter uh, public sector organizations with the four transformation we need so structural digital cultural and also uh, regulatory uh, transformations thank you very much pak johari and dear participants thank you very much professor echo uh, i we have started to receive question from participant professor echo uh, i would like to read question from mr wahyudi the question reads how are secure are this use of it and big data in streamlining the bureaucracy in the third world countries yeah this is very challenging question yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. no one can uh, uh, make sure that the technology being used in the uh, transformation is uh, secure yeah because uh, in the technology always uh, they are also te uh, advanced technology what we can do is that uh, we have to make sure that all technology used by the governments can be protected uh, protected by the uh, system that we install but also by the uh, agencies yeah so for example the um, cyber agencies for national security and something like that but also uh protected by um people of the capability of civil servants in managing and using uh, technology uh, ICT and also other advanced technologies yeah so this is very dynamics uh, uh changes in in the world yeah by using ICT nobody can uh, nobody can make sure that all ICT uh, been secure uh that what we can do is all, only uh, um, establish the cyber agencies yeah so developing the capabilities of cyber servants yeah, in managing uh, and using the it thank you pak juari thank you uh, professor echo uh, another question from the participant from dr raymond maiden are we viewing bureaucracy negatively corporates are also bureaucratic should it be about a mindset change and encouraging intrapreneurship yeah bureaucracy is always characterized by uh, slow response uh, delaying the services uh, red tape uh, corrupt and, and, and so on yeah but originally uh max weber wrote that bureaucracy is ideal types uh, for the, the organizations yeah with uh, several uh, ideal type of organizations but when it did uh, implement it or practice uh, bureaucracy uh, are facing the culture in the in the uh, in the country so i think because of the culture that exists in the nation or in the countries the ideal type of bureaucracy has been um, slowly changed yeah what we call hierarchy into the hierarchies 
So hierarchy is better, yeah. It's good for a span of control, command, and so on. But hierarchies is bureau, uh, uh, organization that characterize too much hierarchy. So uh, the slow of decision making process and, and so on. So yes, it is right that the bureaucracy, the changing bureaucracy is also including the change, the mindset and also culture set values of the bureaucrat itself, but also changing the culture and social uh, values in the society because the bureaucracy and society are interacting each other. They share uh, the culture each other. So the bad or good bureaucracy so depend on the characteristic of uh, society itself. So the, uh, the building of educations into the good culture in the, in the society also will also influence the uh, culture in the bureaucracy. Yeah. So there are so many uh, ideas, contemporary ideas to change the bureaucracy, what we uh, understand as uh, a global new public management movement. So using the tools, spirit of the private sector into the bureaucracy, so, so that the bureaucracy could more uh, entrepreneur, yeah, more uh, agile, transparent, accountable, and so on. That's a very insightful thought from you, Professor Echo, on the relationship between bureaucracy and the society which influence each other. Uh, Professor Echo, we want to read a question that we pick up from the Facebook page. You mentioned cultural change is required. What can governments do to change the mindset of the public servant? Professor Echo, I, we think we have lost your voice. Uh, Please be patient, participant. I think we have some challenge with the with the connection with Professor Echo at present. Professor Echo. Just hang on for a while, participant. We still waiting for signal from Professor Echo.
Professor. Yes. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> She's I, okay. I think there are a problem in my uh, in my Wi-Fi, uh, but I connect with my mobile networks. It's already right. working. I think it's because uh, the labor force are demonstrating now against the governments today in <laughs> Indonesia. <laughs> because yesterday, uh, the parliament and the government approved the new omnibus law. Right. In the condition and regulation of uh, labor force in Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sorry, but yeah. I'm okay. We are glad you are back, Professor. Thank uh, you. Thank you. We we'll continue with the last question that we we yes. posted just now from the Facebook page. Uh, the question reads: You mentioned cultural change is required. Yes. What can government do to change the mindset of the public servant? <laughs> This is very difficult question, you know. <laughs> Changing the mindset, culture set, and mental model need uh, a long time. Yeah. So, uh, but I think we have to start. Yeah by uh, first is changing the education and also the training system yeah education since the elementary schools yeah but also training and educations for civil servants so i think we have to change from the traditional training and education for civil servants into the problem based uh, educations uh, for the civil servants yeah uh, Of course, this this is not a uh, uh, short way yeah, to change the cultures, but I believe that uh, changing the culture should be starting from the elementary school, yeah, yeah? from changing the society and also the children, uh, the next generations. So we need maybe uh, 20 or 25 years yeah, to to change the cultures, and based on the experience, maybe uh, in, also in Malaysia, Singapore. South Korea and also uh, Japan. So we need uh, lo longer time yeah, to change the cultures, but we have to start it. Yeah. But also I think it's very important that, uh, for example, ministers, senior executive services in the bureaucracy should uh, be playing a role model for the civil servants. Yeah. So we have to create some uh, system that uh, protect Uh, the people abuse of power in the government and so on. So like uh, a whistleblowing system, yeah, uh, bribery, uh, bribery protection system, and so on. Yeah. Um, but my experience when I was the vice minister, I I, I created so-called agent of change or uh, change of in, in uh, integrity uh, consists of. Uh, young civil servants in the bureaucracy in in the ministry that should show the uh, new model or new integrity of bureaucracy uh, in in daily activity yeah uh, rejecting uh, bribe uh, bribery in the public services and and so on so training and educations for the com for the for the community for the civil servants role model Uh, creating system that avoid uh, abuse of power in the bureaucracy, as well as creating um, agent of change and agent of, agent of integrity consists of a young, a young civil servant will will help and also enhance, uh, strengthen the new model of culture in the bureaucracy. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Professor. It seems that uh, it's a combination of continuous education as well yeah. as role role modeling. Yeah? Uh, the the follow-up question is from Mr. Nur Iskandar. The question reads, what are the main challenge for Indonesian government to reform its public sector structure organization? What are the key drivers? Does it require highest political in intervention? Yes. How long does it need for government to reform in the case of Indonesia? Yeah, I think the most problematic factors constraining reform uh, of administrative system in Indonesia is the, the political uh, interference yeah, into the bureaucracy. Yeah. Uh, because the power of politics into the bureaucracy is very big. So the 
appointment of uh, carrier uh, civil servants still depend on the uh, political uh, power of the uh, ministers of the governors of the head of district and mayor yeah so of course we have tried to change the system by introducing so called uh, open selection system so for the position uh, director general and also director we introduced since 2015 so called uh, open selection system where the candidates should uh, apply for the positions and uh, the candidates will be um, um, tested by assessment center yeah by uh, in, uh, through interview and also uh, by writing the paper to uh, to see how the visions and uh, missions and strategy of the candidates and so on so creating more transparent and accountable system so we'll uh, enhance the and reduce will and reduce the political interference into the bureaucracy in indonesia but this is not easy because for more than 32 years indonesian bureaucracy is under the uh, power of politics yeah, during Suharto era and after uh, reform in uh, 1998 um, still there are political interference but uh, co-opted by multi-party system in Indonesia so from the gold car in the or the Baru era during the Suharto into the uh, multi-party multi political party system yeah so the interference uh, not only from the single party but also from the uh, multi political party uh, system this is the most problematic factor we are facing now in indonesia to improve the professionalism in the bureaucracy but also changing the culture so the colonial uh, history in indonesia has established so called power culture so not uh, service delivery culture but power cultures so the bureaucracy has been created by the colonial regime yeah not to the not to the not to serve the the, the citizen but to uh, co-op yeah to interference yeah to um uh, yeah to uh, to be a hand of a colonial regime yeah in this in this society this is the problem that exists uh, the culture problem that exists from colonial history of indonesia uh, and also the uh, authoritarian state yeah during the suharto yeah and the culture still exists so we need time uh, to change the culture itself i think two problematic factors political interference and also the existing culture thank you uh, Professor, the next question is from Salma Ramli. Uh, the, she asks, as mentioned earlier, agile transformation is one of the prerequisite in a, in a flat organization structure. In this situation, do strong leadership from the top is vital? Yeah, it's, that's right. I think uh, the, the leadership play a very, a very important role yeah, in the in the reform yeah. uh, so this is in the in the in the transition of generations so called uh, the transition from baby boomers generation into the x generation to y and z generations so overall uh, from the demographic view we can see that the baby boomers generation only about 11 percent i think yeah uh, and y and z generation is uh, 63 percent of the populations at least in indonesia so they are still consists of two main generations the baby boomers generation and also the uh, y and z generation so the x generation maybe it's about uh, 29 percent yeah so uh, in the top positions, 
the uh, baby boomers generations play a very important role because they are now uh, leading the bureaucracy. Yeah. But with the character of uh, mental model, all mental model, all this traditional culture yeah, that exists already in the bureaucracy during the authoritarian state, also maybe uh, during the past uh, governments or regime. Yeah. So I think um, there are skills of future leader needed uh, to create flat organizations. The leader that inspires and motivated others is very important. Uh, the leader that displays high integrity and honesty. Yeah. The leader that solves problem and analyze issues. Yeah. Uh, drives for uh, more productivity and results. So the leader that uh, has uh, capability to communicate uh, with the politic, uh, polit politician, also political party. Yeah. So so called political management. So how to interact. Uh, political with political parties and political interests and uh, transform and translate into the uh, bureaucracy. The leader that collaborates and promotes teamwork, uh, build relationship with the society, yeah, multi-stakeholder management. Yeah, the leader that have, uh, has a capability to change uh, the uh, has the capability in change management. Yeah, and uh, of course. The leader who displays technical and uh, professional expertise. I think leader is very important in the uh, bureaucratic reform, in, in the national reform uh, as whole. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Thank you, Bart. Uh, you made a very good point, Professor, about the importance of leadership in bureaucratic reform, and you describe the characteristic of the leaders that potentially lead such a successful reform. Uh, the question is, how do we make such leader, Professor? Mm. What? Yeah, yeah. OK, I think uh, creating leaders should be starting by selecting uh, the potential candidate into the leaders. Okay. leaders. So the way we select the leaders play a very important role in creating good leaders. So I think we tried in Indonesia by selecting the best people from the best graduates from the best university. So uh, to be posted into the uh, senior executive services. Yeah, because they are agent of change who has authority to change knowledge and also a national interest. So selecting the best people into the uh, highest ranking position is very important. Uh, professional, open, uh, competition-based, and also competence-based uh, selection process. Uh, second thing is, uh, of course, good training process. How to train the best uh, selected people to have uh, more capability on change management, risk management, strategic management, multi-stakeholder management, yeah? performance management, and so on. So the people who has capability to see for a uh, for, uh, long future, so um, thinking ahead, the capability to uh, compare, benchmark, the improvement of governments and uh, public services among the countries, among the uh, state or lo local governments, but also the, the, the people who has capability to uh, think continuously improvement, but always the good culture, yeah, incorruptibility, meritocracy, uh, growth, yeah, prudent, and so on. So this is the uh, improvement of the training uh, program and process to establish, to create the good leader in the bureaucracy. But we still have a problem because the political leaders, for example, in Indonesia, they don't have any uh, sel a good selection process and also training process yeah, to be, for example, member of parliament, uh, councillors, or uh, to be a governor, mayor, and, and the ministers. 
So this is the gap between the political leaders and also the uh, bureaucratic leaders. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think this is two more uh, two important uh, things to uh, create a better leader in the future: selection process and also the creating more uh, better training programs for them. Yeah. Uh, Professor, another question from the Facebook page. Uh, it reads, the four changes you mentioned may take different amount of time to be successfully implemented. I think the question refer to the, the four dimension that you mentioned earlier, structural, digital, culture, and regulatory reform. Uh, can you share Indonesia's or any other country experience within your studies? What is the questions? The, the cultural reform, yeah, Pak, Pak uh, The question say, reads the four changes yes. that, that you mentioned, uh, namely structural, digital, cultural, and regulatory reform, yes. may take different amount of time to be successfully implemented. Yes, yeah. Can you share? Indonesia's or any other country experience within your studies? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe I will uh, explain based on uh, two experience. Yeah. During my uh, time as a vice minister and also more than 25 years uh, active in a discussion with uh, practitioner and also uh, scholars in in ASEAN countries, yeah, uh, in ASEAN countries like uh, Korea, uh, yeah, Japan, also Malaysia and also Singapore. Yeah. So I think the reform should should be focused in in uh, in a, in a time in in a time. So for example, in three or five years. So we improve the process of recruiting new civil servants yeah for example because uh, if we can recruit the best talented people into the bureaucracy it will be uh, huge resources for us to be agent of change in the bureaucracy so in 3 years we improve revise install new system uh, to have um, new recruitment system in Indonesia, yeah, in order to select uh, the best candidate, uh, the best uh, uh, graduates from the best university, and it's successful. So now Indonesia has a very good uh, civil servant, young civil servants, as. Uh, uh, a capital for bureaucracy to be uh, a change of uh, agent of change. Yeah. yeah. So, how successful can be achieved depend on the commitment, depend on the focus of program, and depend on the detail of programs. Yeah. Normally, we have uh, many and also very ambitious program. Yeah. We try to change everything in the bureaucracy right this is the so-called the ambitious uh, program of reform right. but i propose that the program of reform should be focused on uh, and uh, prioritize on the one or two uh, re programmatic reform like uh, uh, improving the selection process uh, so introducing uh, performance-based payment or compensation and something like that so in three or five years, done, and then move to another uh, programmatic reform. Something like that, Pak Johari. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, the next question come from Mr. Wahyudi. I reckon this question referring to the system in Indonesia. Uh, he, uh, he, he says, bureaucracy is headed by a minister and most ministers are mostly political appointees and often uh, they require financial support.
from outside and they need to recover uh, the investment that they have made before they being appointed as a minister. Any feedback on that, Professor Echo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, many scholars identified that administrative reform is political process. This is not administration process. So uh, reforming the bureaucracy should including also the political uh, party and political system reform. Uh, but this is not easy because we follow so-called the first winning theory. Right. It means that who win the election, they will uh, uh, has the power to change the system. Right. Yeah. What we can do is improve the quality of bureaucratic system to avoid because, you know, hand in hand, the politic and the administrative system uh, is uh, has uh, interactions yeah, hand in hand. So we what we can do is to uh, reduce the political intervention into the bureaucracy by creating independent system. For example, uh, before we introduce a uh, new law on civil seven in Indonesia, the selections process to be posted into the senior executive services depend on uh, individually depend on the uh, uh, subordinate superordinate so the ministers the governors and also the mayor but we change move into the more of more um, more accountable yeah based on the competition and competency so the political leaders cannot directly inter interference the selection process and they have to wait until the until the bureaucratic process will end. For example, that they have three best candidates to be selected one of three. Yeah. So this is the uh, combinations between the merit system in the bureaucracy process into the political process. So we reduce the uh, political interest of the ministers and the governors by using the uh, professionalism and also marriage system into the bureaucracy. Yeah, this is what I can answer back because we have to also revise the law of political system and political parties in Indonesia. Yeah. If we get it right, Professor, there's still ways to, to, to manage it. Yeah. 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 yeah right. So because of the uh, economic and political cost, uh, transition cost in Indonesia is very high. So they have to uh, pay back the cost in the elections. Yeah. Then bureaucracy and the businessman is uh, like automatic uh, teller machine. Yeah. <laughs> I, <think. laughs> I like your analogies. <laughs> Uh, let us move to the next question, uh, which is read from Desi, Miss Desi Arianti. Uh, her question: Since the global condition is very dynamic, uh, to what extent does flat organization fit to facing those dynamics, especially based on the experience many countries facing global pandemic COVID-19? Uh, to your knowledge, Professor, which country have done more successfully in handling it? The flat one or the more hierarchical one? Yes, this is very important questions. Yeah. COVID-19 pandemic is just the latest in a growing list of disruptors confronting governments. Yeah. Uh, and this associated uh, socioeconomic crisis. Yeah. Uh, raising many unknowns and imposing wrenching threat ops. Yeah, the crises are global, but their impact are deeply local. So, if we comparing the bureaucratic system, yeah, in the world, so so uh, namely Weberian style and also uh, new public management style. So, I think. Uh, some countries like uh, Germany, yeah, uh, Japan, uh, 
are characterized by Weberian style. So mostly characterized by Weberian style. So if we uh, read article from Wolfgang Drexel, some Weberian style of bureaucracy, so uh, implement uh, more effective uh, policy yeah, compared to new public management. So I think this is because of um, long traditions of Germans uh, bureaucracy based on the Reichstag model, who uh, were very uh, efficient and effective for a uh, long time ago. So German is very uh, effective and efficient uh, bureaucracy in the world uh, because they implement the ideal type of Weberian consistently. Yeah, all the decision made by the government should be based on the rule, should be based on the uh, efficient and effective indicators. Yeah, <clears throat> but if we pick up, for example, <clears throat> New Zealand, New Zealand is the second best uh, country who can manage and solve the COVID-19 pandemic efficiently and also uh, effectively. New Zealand is one country characterized by a strong new public management system. So I think uh, if we compare German, Japan, as a model of Weberian and also New Zealand uh, as a model of new public management, these three countries um, implement and managing COVID-19 effectively and also uh, efficiently. So we, uh, in the conclusion, we can say that uh, not depend on the Weberian on uh, or new public management's characters. Still, there are uh, size and complexity in the country who will influence to manage uh, COVID. For example, culture. Culture is very important. Culture of community. So uh, compliant culture, yeah? Uh, discipline culture, very important in managing COVID-19. Uh, of course, capability of bureaucracy is very important. But also the harmony of regulations is very important. Right. Yeah. Uh, and also how decentralization and also the relations between federal or uh, central, right. state or provincial, and also municipality right. is also very important. So culture, capability of bureaucracy, uh, harmony of regulations, right. but also the relations between central and local governments play a very important role right. uh, in uh, managing COVID-19. Thank you. Uh, that's a very thoughtful response, Professor. The way that we gather is that we, we shouldn't see the bureaucracy in isolation. There are other variables that work yes. together at the same time. Yeah? Uh, Professor, probably this is the last question. It comes from Iqbal. Uh, he says, Salam, Professor. Thank you for your insight and sharing. My question is, is there a relationship between hierarchies or big bureaucracy and risk aversion in decision making? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, more hierarchy bureaucracy uh, makes slower the decision making process. Yeah. So in Indonesia, we consist of, uh, of, of five hierarchy yeah? uh, S1, S1, 2, S1, 3, 4, and 5. So after having uh, the, uh, the, the letter, normally the D Director General will send a letter to the S12, S12 will be delivered to S13, S14, and also S15. This uh, it's, will take time. So the decision process, uh, decision making process will, uh, will be delayed uh, with the higher hierarchy uh, in the bureaucracy. So what we're trying in Indonesia is to delay rings S13 and 4 and 5. Uh, the goal is to make shorter the decision making process, policy making process in the bureaucracy, but also making professional uh, 
civil servants uh, uh, through um, having the more competencies in doing uh, their job, their assignments uh, in, in, in the bureaucracy. I think, of course, now we are moving into the flat organizations, uh, functional based organizations, uh, performance oriented or performance based organizational structure. Everybody has to ask their own selves what kind of role and contribution they have uh, to achieve the performance indicator uh, set in the, in, the, in the organization, also in the national uh, development programs. So everybody should ask their own selves right. kind of role and contribution I should deliver to the uh, organizations. Thank you. That's, that's a very profound question, Professor. <laughs> and I think it's also a tough question for everyone to ask about the roles and responsibility that they owe to an organization. Professor, we have come to the end of today's session. Uh, would you like to offer some parting words, Professor? Yeah, I think in the development program, there are two blocks. One is the content of development itself, the social development, political development, economic development, and so on. But another block is so-called necessary condition, enabling factors. So this is what we call uh, bureaucracy, the engine of development. So, so far I observe in some countries like Indonesia, maybe in some other ASEAN countries, they are focusing more on the development of uh, the content of development, uh, rejecting uh, the importance of uh, necessary condition and enabling factor in the bureaucracy. So what is necessary conditions? Regulations, human resource development, uh, structure and business process, uh, technology, yeah, and other ecosystem that would uh, enable uh, development program into the uh, effective uh, implementations of uh, program and activities into the practice. So I what, what I want to say that we have to balance uh, between the block, the content of development, but also the block of bureaucracy as an enabling factor of development. This is very important. So that's why why administrative in reform is very important program in uh, in some countries like Korea, uh, like China, China, also Japan, and also in in Malaysia. I think Malaysia and Singapore is. Uh, to a good example for us in Indonesia, how bureaucratic reform make uh, professionalism as foundations uh, to make sure that all development program will be effectively implemented into the practice and the delivery of uh, excellent public services into the uh, citizens. This is my last comments. So I think we are very optimistic that Indonesia and also Malaysia and other countries in ASEAN uh, will achieve uh, their own development goals and especially sustainable development goals. Thank you Inshallah. very much, Jerry. Inshallah. We would like to thank Professor Dr. Eko for spending time with us today. Dr. Professor, it, it is an excellent discussion that we had today. Uh, we really look forward to more collaboration with Professor Eko and University of Indonesia in the future. We also thank the participant for taking part. We value your views and feedback. We apologize for any shortcoming. Please follow us on social media for future session. Till we meet again, take care, stay safe, and thank you. Terima kasih banyak, Bapak. Sampai jumpa lagi. Terima kasih. Thank you very much, Pak. Stay healthy for uh all of you yeah kami pun doa bapak sihat-sihat selalu ya alhamdulillah amin ya rabbal alamin thank you pak assalamualaikum si, si waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh